Hello, I'm Seafood Source editor Sean Murphy, and welcome again to another edition of Seafood Source TV, the bi weekly video blog that brings you insights, news, and information from the world of the seafood industry. This week, Marine Harvest's takeover bid for CERMAC continues to overshadow the story of who will control Peruvian fish meal and fish oil company Copa Inca in the future. Copa Inca's ownership first came into question back in February when China Fishery Group made an unsolicited buyout offer out of the blue. Copa Inca rejected that offer and then reacted more favorably to a competing offer from Norwegian seafood company CERMAC. But soon CERMAC competitor Marine Harvest took the spotlight by offering its own takeover bid for CERMAC. The catch? CERMAC had to abandon its bid for Copa Inca. Now we expect to know what CERMAC will do after the company's annual meeting next week, so be sure to keep watching SeafoodSource.com for the latest on that issue. But regarding whatever happens next, China Fishery has not given up. After CERMAC made its competing offer, China Fishery came back with an offer to match it. So even if CERMAC remains committed to its offer, China Fishery will remain a competitor bidder in the company. But why does China Fishery want Copa Inca so badly? And what does it mean for the future of China fishery and the seafood industry in general? Well, joining us now via Skype to help us make a little bit more sense of it all is Mark Godfrey. He's a longtime seafood source contributor who covers the seafood industry in China for us. Mark, good to have you here with us today on Seafood Source TV. Good to be with you, Sean. Well, uh, thanks for joining us. And uh, before we get started, let's just talk a little bit about China fishery. If you could just, just uh, tell us a little bit about what the company is, for those who don't understand it and don't know it, what is, is its role in the seafood industry in China there? Well, uh, the China Fishery Group, which has its roots in uh, this in Singapore, and has a heavy presence in Hong Kong as well. It's a key supplier of fish meal and um, also inputs for processing into factories in China. Now, I think it's key, it, it, it's become a real key supplier on the fish meal side to China's aquaculture industry, which we all know is the world's biggest in terms of output. And um, the group's presence in China has become more important because um, China going forward is going to need a lot more fish meal as it moves to, to more high value uh, seafood, particularly for the domestic market. And the China Fisheries Group uh, also sees, it, sees itself as becoming the key player for the region. So it's not just mainland China but also Taiwan and Japan. And I've been talking with several of the companies that it supplies fish meal in China, and they're certainly keen that the deal goes ahead uh, because they're quite keen uh, to make the uh, price of the fish meal a little bit more predictable, a little bit more stable. Because like in the last decade, the prices have more than doubled as, as some of the um, uh, the, the, the key aqua feed suppliers like the Hague Group and Hongwei have been, have been telling me and the analysts to cover those companies that uh, the, the volatility in the, in the, in the fish, meal, fish oil prices coming into China is really hurting the investors in those Chinese companies. Now, it's not just, you've got to bear in mind as well that fish meal is crucial to another uh, key industry in China, and that's the pork industry, which is also the world's largest. Uh, in terms of output, so they about 10% of the feed going into a lot of China's um, pork uh, feed is actually fish meal. So the Chinese have a lot at stake, and they certainly support this bid by the by the China Fishery Group for the Peruvian. Um, so, so it sounds like that that's their main thing is trying to get into the sorry the trying to get into the Peruvian to to buy Copenco will bolster their fish meal efforts. This is not about trying to get into the Peruvian markets or, or breaking into South America or anything like that. This is purely about acquiring more sources of fish meal. Is that a fair assessment? Absolutely. And you have to you have to look at this as well in the context of mainland Chinese base and also Hong Kong listed Chinese uh, ag agricultural groups going on a buying spree around the world because they're very worried about the volatility in prices going forward in key agricultural inputs, particularly feed. So if China Fisher Group doesn't close this deal, uh, you can be sure that down the road there will be Chinese groups like Hongwei, New Hope, which also produces aqua feed, and, and um, obviously Hay, the real big one, Guangdong Hay Group. They will also be seeking to buy, um, to, to buy suppliers abroad 
And that's certainly something that's very much supported by the Chinese government. And we don't, uh, we sh should remember as well that there's, there's huge sources of finance there that are being provided by the, by the Chinese government through the China Development Bank to help secure these deals. So I think the, the China Fisher Group is just getting in while it can uh, uh, to, to make this acquisition because um, certainly the people that I talk to in the aquifer business in mainland China uh, are themselves quite looking at overseas and in terms of acquiring assets, but also they're looking to the broader Southeast Asia region then uh, as a future market uh, because uh, China is very keen to to, to move some of its aquaculture business into neighboring states as well, something that I've been writing about on TV. Right, yeah, that, I was going to mention that uh, Mark has an article on SeafoodSource.com right now about the Chinese government and how they are offering subsidies for aquaculture insurance, which is a clear sign that China is looking to improve its aquaculture sector, uh, which is interesting because we, we actually had a letter, uh, this, this came out uh, last week, it was actually on May 6th, uh, from Marine Harvest to the CERMAC shareholders. And I know we're talking about China, but the other half of the Copianca issue is CERMAC, of course, which is trying to buy out Copenka as well, but Marine Harvest is trying to make that, that buyout of, a, of CERMAC. And in a letter to its shareholders, a couple of quick quotes I just want to read to you, Mark, here. Uh, in the open letter, uh, they said, quote, in recent years, developments within fish feed have been characterized by a continuous reduction in the use of marine ingredients. And they were talking about their own uh, uh, aquaculture operations here, saying the proportion of marine ingredients in feed has been reduced from 59% in 2002 to 31% in 2012. The proportion is expected to be further reduced to 10 to 15 percent within a few years. And finally, all research and development on fish meal and fish oils in the aquaculture sector focuses on the reduced use of these resources for feed and increased sales as health supplements, pharmaceuticals, and human food. So marine harvest is definitely making the pitch that fish feed will not necessarily be in aquaculture's future. Now, to be fair, this was uh, clearly uh, uh, marine harvest's uh, uh, marketing campaign, so to speak, to CERMAC to get them to abandon the, the, the bid for Copa Inc. and stick with the uh, marine harvest bid. But do you, do you think there's any truth to that? And if so, uh, do you think that the that China fishery, if they buy Copa Inc., will be relying on it strictly to be doing the, the, the pig feeding and the agriculture feeding, as, it, uh, as you were talking about? Um, it's very interesting that you uh, bring up that point because I was talking this week to um, the representatives in Asia of the American soy business, and they make that same point too that, that there's a lot of replacement of fish meal. Um, but if bear in mind that in mainland China, fish meal is seen as very much a premium, still a very much a desirable and premium input into aquaculture feeds. And as I said, there's quite a desire among Chinese aquaculture businesses to move into uh, higher margin species. And there's certainly among the uh, aquaculture uh, facilities, the uh, cultivation facilities that I visit in on China, there's certainly a big wish to use uh, fish meal uh, of marine ingredients in the feed that they're giving uh, to these higher direct species. Of the one of those various uh, grades of, of So, marine harvest might make that point, but the, the there is a I don't I, I don't want to stand condescending, but a slight time lag in terms of the the trickle down of knowledge to the industry in China as well. So, at the moment, there's a a view that fish meal is a desirable ingredient that, that you've got to, uh, but you've got to get a handle on the on the supply side of it. That's why uh, the Chinese are very keen to um, secure supply lines of fish meal, and that's certainly I would see the China fisheries feel very much and the desire to do this feel very much in that context. Um, there is just a, a a very big demand uh, still in China for for fish. Well, let's talk about that. Let's assume that China actually uh, does finish its acquisition. They actually acquire Copa Inca and they, they improve their, their supply of fish meal. How is that going to affect the, uh, the, the, the seafood industry in China? And will this, in fact, 
lead to a change in, in China's exports to other countries? In other words, is anybody outside of China, any companies outside of China, should they be you know, uh, watching more carefully to see if China becomes a bigger competitor as a result of this? Um, I don't think, because it's just given the sheer scale of the Chinese um, of, of, of the Chinese market and demand for fish meal, particularly of the, 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 the scale and the strength of growth in domestic uh, demands for, for high quality seafood, I don't think China Fishery, whether it does or doesn't do this deal, the Chinese domestic, the Chinese mainland uh, feed company, ten years down the road, they're going to be they're going to be in the same league as China Fishery, and they're going to be sourcing this kind of uh, these kind of suppliers themselves anyway. So I think that it's not so consequential for the Chinese domestic aquaculture and seafood industry, whether or not the deal is done right now. Um, because, but I think there's a huge amount of support within the industry to try and afford the deal. Um, I think that uh, the, the, the sheer diversity and the sheer strength of demand for seafood in China right now supports, if you like, all commerce uh, to the market. So. It's surprised. I've been surprised how little this deal has been picked up in the actual Chinese language media in China, um, because the focus there is very much on how the domestic beef companies are doing. Um, and right now, the, those companies are very much focused on seafood because the um, the pork market is actually in a pretty bad uh, place right now, and there's quite a big a lot of optimism around domestic demand so aquatic feed is really quite a hot theme among particularly among investors in the seafood industry China right now but um, I think you shouldn't overestimate how much focus there is in mainland China on this deal because as I said there's actually been very little coverage of it in the Chinese language media uh, so I think uh, in the scale of things, in, in the scale of the Chinese industry, that this deal won't have a huge impact either way, whether or not it will. Okay. Okay. Um, but you can be sure that um, ten years out from now, China fishery, uh, if it doesn't do this deal, uh, will have been surpassed by one of the mainland Chinese. So it sounds like what we're looking at here is not so much China uh, making a move on. Uh, are trying to break out of, of China in, into world markets so much as the China reaching outside of its own borders to find suppliers to bring to its own domestic markets. So maybe uh, uh, even if they acquire Copenka, other companies will probably follow suit and maybe might start reaching out to other. So maybe other fish meal countries, uh, companies worldwide uh, might, might, shouldn't be surprised if someday they find an unsolicited bid from some Chinese company. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, you just look at the uh, at the, um, the string of deals that have been done the last uh, five years, in particular the last two years, by Chinese agricultural companies um, acquiring suppliers overseas because they they see really strong demand down the line uh, for high quality food stuff in China, and certainly aquaculture is uh, and demand for high quality is really going to uh, going to increase in China. So there is a lot of it's going to be a lot of interest by domestic Chinese mainland Chinese companies in acquiring aqua feed suppliers. Certain or not. Okay. Okay. Interesting stuff. Uh, thanks very much, Mark Mark Godfrey, for joining us here on Seafood Source TV. That's Mark Godfrey. He's a contributing writer for SeafoodSource.com, covering China for SeafoodSource.com. Keep watching Seafood Source, by the way, for more stories from Mark Godfrey out of China and, of course, more stories from Seafood Source about the Copianca deal. And uh, be sure to check back here next week, or two weeks from now, excuse me, for another edition of Seafood Source TV. Right now, I'm Sean Murphy, Seafood Source editor, saying thanks for watching, and we'll see you online.